After men's tennis had been dominated for 20 years by just three players, the sport was facing an identity crisis about who would go on to emulate the greats of Federer, Nadal and Djokovic. A new breed of stars showed some promise, but they still looked way off the standards set by the big three. But then one man, or rather one boy, came out of nowhere. Carlos Alcaraz's rise to become the youngest world number one at just 19 years old and a two-time Grand Slam winner by the age of 20 has blown away the entire tennis world. Rightfully, people are calling him the next GOAT. He has the potential to completely dominate the sport over the next 15 years. Why? Well, people say he's the complete player. He's got the elegance of Federer, the power of Nadal, and the flexibility of Djokovic. This triple threat makes Alcaraz a player that is seemingly destined to become the next big thing. Yet amid the spotlight and applause, a vital element of his journey remains concealed an element that holds the key to his unparalleled rise. Something unseen, but is actually front and center of his approach to the sport. And what is this secret? Well, let's find out. To explain Alcaraz's secret weapon, we need to go back to the 2023 French Open. Because of a lingering hip injury, the king of clay and 14-time winner Rafa Nadal pulled out of the tournament less than a week before it was due to start. Because of this, many believe that it was Alcaraz's time to become the new prince of this competition, given that clay was his favorite and best surface. He had also won the US Open the previous September and went into Roland Garros as the top seed. And for most of the tournament, it was plain sailing for him. Alcaraz dispatched four of his five opponents in straight sets on his pathway to the semi-final where he would then meet the man who had dominated the sport for the last decade, Novak Djokovic. And in that match, something interesting happened. For what seemed like almost the first time in his entire career, Alcaraz looked human. After two extremely intense sets, Alcaraz began to suffer from full body cramps and he could no longer run. The explosion, power and ruthless tracking of the court looked no longer possible. Djokovic soon wrapped up the match, winning both of the final sets 6-1 and Alcaraz was sent packing. What was interesting was that prior to this match, the young Spaniard had openly said in interviews many times that he doesn't feel pressure or nerves when competing. Up until this point in his career, he'd seemed immune to the stresses that come with playing elite tennis at the biggest competitions in the world. But after this semi-final, Alcaraz came out and said that, I've never felt something like I did today. I've never felt that tension like I did in that match. Despite these cramps on the surface appearing a physical issue, what they were actually a result of was a mental issue. Alcaraz openly admitted that during this match, he felt an incredible amount of nerves for the first time in his entire career. And it was this fracture in his mind that led to his body breaking down and ultimately failing him. And although he didn't openly admit it, it's also very likely that Alcaraz was not only feeling the pressure of playing the GOAT in a Grand Slam semi-final, but also the pressure of playing on his favored surface. He thinks of himself first and foremost as a clay player. And so the French Open is the tournament above all else that he should dominate in. Despite playing other tournaments as the number one seed, this one would have felt much more pressurized, that he was the number one and this was his house. But instead of allowing this setback to consume him and threaten to become a negative spiral of panic performance after panic performance, Alcaraz was surprisingly calm about how to fix this issue. And that's because for the past few years, he's been using a secret weapon, a sports psychologist. Alcaraz has openly admitted that when he was a junior player, he didn't control his emotions well. It would be a regular thing for him to get really pissed off. When he was 15 or 16, he would throw his racket around quite a bit or break them, and this would often put his game at risk. So he knew he had to improve in that respect, and so sought out the support from a psychologist for the first time in 2020. While this is becoming increasingly common in sport, it's still quite rare for someone so young to go down this path. It's very easy for teenagers and young men to feel like they're invincible, that they can conquer everything themselves, and just talking about their feelings and emotions is an automatic no-go. But Alcaraz has shown immense maturity at such a young age in realizing that working on his mental game is going to be the deciding factor in big moments at the highest level. He acknowledged very early on that going out onto the courts in front of tens of thousands of spectators is naturally overwhelming for a teenager. And he's realized that it's easy to get consumed with the hype of the crowd. So he's specifically worked on still showing his passion and using energy from the crowd while simultaneously remaining stable and in control of his emotions. And after this defeat to Djokovic, Alcaraz got to work on refining his mentality. And just a couple of months later, he faced Djokovic again, but this time in the Wimbledon final. Djokovic had not lost on center court in 10 years, was on a 34 game winning streak in the competition and had won the last four editions of the tournament. And for Alcaraz, he was playing on his supposed worst surface. Prior to this competition, he'd only participated in three grass tournaments. So arguably the pressure was on more so than when the men had met in Paris. But Alcaraz prior to this match said that he would prepare for this final differently than he did the French Open semi-final. He would work with his psychologist to devise strategies that could keep him as calm and composed from the very moment he stepped out onto the court to ensure that there was no repeat of those cramps. Despite this composure, Alcaraz would face the toughest match of his entire career. He suffered a horrendous first set, losing 6-1 to the Serb. This would be a cause for alarm, to go down so easily so early to a man who knew how to win this competition like the back of his hand. But Alcaraz stayed calm. He reset himself, forgot the first set and just focused on playing every point. All he had to do was tick these off one by one, even though there was a long journey ahead. 
He improved in the second set and managed to steal it during a tiebreak. This proved to be a tipping point because in the third set, Alcaraz dominated 6-1. However, Djokovic stole the fourth set 6-3 to take it to an all-deciding fifth set. On paper, this would be the time for Alcaraz to crumble because the tide had turned again to the player that had dominated the tournament for the past decade. But again, Alcaraz did not buckle under this pressure. He reset himself again and just focused on every point in every game, ticking these off as best he could not getting ahead of himself, and also not ruining missed opportunities or bad points he lost. After 4 hours and 42 minutes, Carlos Alcaraz finally toppled Djokovic 6-4 in the final set to become Wimbledon's youngest male winner since 1985. Alcaraz in that moment also became only the second man to defeat the Serb in a five-set Grand Slam final since Andy Murray at the US Open in 2012. This was a huge moment in tennis history even more so, because Alcaraz became the first man in over 20 years to win this competition who wasn't Djokovic, Nadal, Federer or Murray. And for all the physical comparisons made between the Spaniard and his predecessors, what set him apart that day was his mental resilience. His secret weapon of using a sports psychologist to work on the side of the game that we don't see proved to be the difference. And it's this mentality he's developing that will ensure he goes on a run throughout his career that gives him a chance of becoming tennis's true GOAT. But the big question is, what do athletes like Alcaraz actually learn from sports psychologists? If you're interested, check out this next video here.